What happened to the messenger? Where had he come from before your time? Where did he vanish away to? Imagine his room. Bare, curtainless, crooked window shades streaked by rain because the windows had been left open. The smell of trains in it. A crucifix on the wall at the head of the bed. In his bed, on a thin, sunken mattress, his long form under the covers, his dust-covered high-top shoes towing out from under the bed, his Hamilton white-faced railroad man's watch ticking on the little marble-top table, the closet door ajar, crooked in its hinges. Within, his blue-striped coveralls hung from a staple on the wall like his own hanged body. No photographs, no Bible, no Western stories, no hair oil, merely the room where he lay, ungiven to it, as if stopping over to rest. Having arrived there on his way to not any particular where, but can a man's life be so bare, so unpossessed, Somewhere he had left something behind. For years his gesture and his image haunted you, hung and hovered over you like a kite in the air around you, triangular face, bony, stretched papery skin on a kite, his face swimming and dipping and bowing and rising and darting and looking down at you, his kite face, Send up a message. You had built Kite, and Kite had taken his message and delivered it. Now you must shape him like Kite and send his message back to him. For out of a wreck something is left, freed, sent on to other hands, put into the world, leaving a ghost behind until ghost and flesh be brought together again and a and the whole thing vanish, accounted for to its eternal hushedness. What to proclaim out of it all? For years the message, scrap of paper bearing what words, had been falling, falling over the unstilled landscape of your mind with no place to land, no rest in place, no one to receive the cry of the message, you were pondering and brooding over dust and light, the poverty of dirt, the little speck of light the dust draws to and hovers round. You thought of that king's son, wild in his skins, the traveler lost in the hill, his old kinsman blind on the road, the joining of father and son, you were full of this kind of thought and laboring with passion and sternness to shape dust and light and pour houseless poverty into some little lasting form, shaped out of dust but held together for a little while by the light you begged for. Every day the shape of a terrible thought or idea or memory rose up in you, from some opened grave to claim your mind like a presence. It was a wrestling with some visitation of a ghost. You fought it out upon another body as though you thought flesh might appease or pacify the ghost or upon your own as if to chasten the ghost in your flesh. To be still, hands folded, mind resting like a fallen kite, its cry gone on and take silence in the silencing of all flesh, and let the ghost ride out of the flesh. You, kite maker and kite flyer, were in a great city where following some shape, was it light or of darkness, you had wandered into an unreal ghost-haunted territory, into a landscape of ad addict elations, hallucinations and obsessions where it seemed you were a kite flying over the landscape. Your gaze walked down the tight string that held you aloft, alienated you, separated you, and far, far below you saw the fisted, gripped hand that held you, 
you're only mooring to the ground, this vanished artificer. Who will send the kite a message, you cry? Or can kite send down a message, though kite fall and lie broken and caught in a leafless tree like one torn leaf in a windless season? This cry was hidden in the thick and leafed in num numberless cries of your brain, secret, lodged, and hidden. You were in this city where men had lost speech and could not tell, where children had lost fathers, where childless men and womanless men searched for wife and child. Homeless poverties were wild and loose in the flumes of stone. Through holes in the walls between men, two eyes met, eye upon eye, seen jungles in the eye, vines, a lion in the jungle, a tear. So this is what it has all led to, you thought. This ghost-grieved room where I sit, hell street below, the odor of delicatessence, dog shit on the sidewalks, drunken men wheeling and calling in the street, the dirty yelling children, you son of a bitch, you think you're the big shot because you got a pack of cigarettes, motherfucker. The Cubans and Portuguese sitting on the fire plugs, the blown trash, the forlorn apartment houses, the caricature of the of a woods where human beings moiling like insects broke the tender night, and you wanting to make something tender and full of faith and simplicity in the midst of this tenderness and ugliness, this loveless, faithless, vile world of men and goods, to live in the veins until something deep, deep within begins to open out and rise up slowly, slowly. It is in the veins that the purity lives and happens. It is all there, everything, the whole truth, the whole vision in the veins, you thought. Oh, grief, oh, lonely. Speech lies lodged under us like a river under slate. Grief hangs over us like a becalmed kite. Send message up to it, down to it. You thought of the messages ticking on the telegraphs at depots, of all the letters speaking in the mailbags and mailboxes, cries along the telephone wires, of all the people telling things, the whole world talking and telling and sending out messages, yet nobody could tell the gesture was lost. For speech lay lodged under men like a river under slate, hung becalmed over them like a hovering kite in a windless season. Send messages down to it. Send messages up to it. Try, try. The patched, webbed face of the ghost floats around us, hangs lodged in our air over us, moored to our hearts that try to send messages up the string to it. Proclaim it, proclaim it, but no message would rise. Looking upon this world from your window, you saw the wind lift a scrap of paper from the dirty street and carry it high up into the air, and close to your window, you could see that it was a piece of a letter. Boney Benson. There was a cry lifted from deep down in you up to your throat that you could not utter. It was his cry, now covered up with dirt, that he had given to you and you had carried. Long since silent cry the day you lost the kite and freed the message from his pocket. You turned and called out, man now and no longer child, speaker now and no longer listener, you asking man's question, crying man's cry. Pony Benson, what did the message say that day? What did the message say? Cry cannot be left in throat or breast, unrisen and unfreed. Put it into the air and let it go on, cried, freed, through falling wreckage, follow and hang like a ghost in ruin of cry all the long season. There is the fall, and there is the rising. Call Boney Benson from his grave. Now, Boney Benson, 
was all your question and all your pain and tell it. Mm -hmm.